I S-Rank Armored Core 6 with only Coral Weapons, and it drove me insane. Armored Core 6 has been nominated for the best psychological horror of 2023. Do not S-Rank this game, you will not last 5 minutes. So in today's Armored Core Challenge run, we are going to S-Rank all the available missions, but with a restriction. Coral Weapons are the antithesis of that kid who copies your homework but gets a higher grade. Most of these weapons are better renditions of existing weapons with the unfortunate caveat of consuming the combined energy of the Asian oh continent. God, the? Using these weapons often demands an arm and leg, but with all four slots taken up, I might as well be marginalized. So let's begin the journey and see how bad this challenge could get. To understand how this challenge works, I have to explain my build. This is Aeonia, and like the boss, this AC is fucking bullshit. Let's go over the weapons. The NB Redshift, a beautiful piece of representation as it removes your gender as well as every molecule in your body. Made entirely for charge attacks and does a lot of damage when it hits. The Moonlight Redshift, my guiding moonlight if it was sponsored by a gaming energy drink brand. Please. The Coral Missile Launcher, which is like Elden Stars if it was developed with the taxpayer money that Philippine politicians funnel into their pockets. This weapon takes a long time to charge and travel to your target. But when it does hit, well, whatever argument led you to use this weapon, let's just say you won that one. Better to have two. This build presents a lot of solutions, but poses some problems. Mainly the highest energy requirement in the game. This forces me to use the Not Gonna Light Generator and we the Boobs Core, a mix of high EN capacity and generator output that lets me edge the energy requirement. Then I chose the Ephemera Head for the high attitude stability and the AP, the VP46D for a balance between the three weapon stats, and the ephemeral legs for the low weight and good low limit. The best booster for this build is the P06 SPD with its high thrust stat. I am really good at game. But when I start to multitask four arms, my brain starts to slow down. This is why I prioritized a fast gliding speed over a strong quick boost. The final details include the WLT001 FTS for its balance, the pulse armor expansion, and the infrequent use of the Buetzel boosters for the missions with long travel. I custom baited a lot of the parts in an attempt to incite trauma in the audience. I thought the frequent red projectiles would fit a Melania theme, but even if it doesn't, this paint is still pretty sick. Although I am not good with colors, and most of the work was done by my good friend Vintox. Illegal entry starts us off to a good note by already being impossible, but at the very least, it's a good way to introduce the rating system. There are four total. Normal for missions that went smoothly, challenging for missions that required a substantial amount of skill, hard for missions that were difficult enough to almost make me reconsider its possibility, and impossible for missions like illegal entry that either can't be accomplished or are so bullshit that I give up on it. Moving on, we start with an easy set of missions in destroy artillery installations, grid 135 cleanup, destroy the transport helicopters, and destroy the tester AC. These missions had very simple problems with very simple solutions, and they mostly served as adjustment buffers for my skill set. I am a close range melee based player, and to say this was outside of my comfort zone is an understatement. Complications begin once we step foot in the Destroy the Dam Complex missions. While the first one is pretty straightforward in its objectives, just kill the MTs at the start and then dash to the end. The alternate version has you simulating carpal tunnel through Craigslist threesome. Try to think of how to balance a boss fight with two ACs, and you will notice that FromSoft did none of them. The perfect mix of consistent rifle fire and songbird spam with FCS that calculate your trajectory with the power of a white dwarf. My only tip for this fight is to try your best to kill one before the other one catches up. Depending on your build, this might be the best to do for Iguazu, because because it is canonically accurate to forget about him. Destroy the mining ship was also very simple. Just slap on the Buetzo boosters and remember the path of down, sides, and then top. But escort the mining ship was a lot more complicated, with a touch of the usual bullshit. However, I will admit this one is mostly a skill issue. If you have any sort of ranged weapon with decent burst damage, you can easily take care of the problems in this level. But if you're playing melee, my condolences. Operation Wall Climber takes a little getting used to. Make sure to assault boost along the left edge to avoid the artillery in the beginning. Once you fight the boss, watch where you land because it's easy to miss the mines, but aside from that, it's actually pretty easy. Retrieve Combat Logs solely requires that you have prior knowledge or a YouTube video available. I ain't teaching all that, here's a link. Although my only tip is to head to the wreck underneath the ship on your left before you do the mission, because falling is faster than flying. Prisoner Rescue is the first real skill check. Mission 8 doesn't count. Do not follow the ship, you will lose. Follow the path and kill everything ahead of it. But most especially these turrets and the anti-air missiles at the end. However, come back as fast as possible when the ship extracts the first guy because they will be ambushed by newly spawned enemies. If you do this correctly, your only struggle is the shit at the end. For this, take out the MPs flawlessly and quickly, then immediately engage Niall. This is easier said than done, and that's why it's a skill check. I fucking hate this mission. Investigate Bao's Arsenal number 2 is a chapter 1 version of Attack the Refueling Base. Tell me how I got this to S rank with only meal weapons but not with the fucking Ascarabombo Plata. If you're wondering, the parameters are set entirely by chance, and your S rank is decided by a random assortment of numbers decided by solar radiation. Fuck this mission. 
obstruct the mandatory inspection is one of the times that FromSoft had a little bit of self-awareness. Despite the mission that throws three bosses at you, it's pretty generous. I got a S rank on the first try despite teetering on 400 health. So all you really have to do is beat the mission to get the S rank. Hmm. Huh. Maybe edging is goaded. I don't know why I've never failed to get an S rank and attack the watch point. Despite being known as the hard mission, I always breeze through or do just good enough. The alternate version is also not that bad. Just make sure to kill Sula as fast as possible before you focus the drones. Balteus is... well, it's pretty much exactly the same. Now for Infiltrate Grid 086, this mission beat the fuck out of me back then. So now it's time for revenge. The worst thing about this fight is still the comically sized hole. It's easy to argue that this is the fight, because the entire struggle is just to get into the hole. Suffice it to say, Genshin fans will never beat this one. Eliminate the Dozer faction is a mission not made for the human experience. To get an S rank here, you have to optimize your movements beyond the boundaries of reason. If you shoot and miss, just restart the mission because it's already over. Stop the Secret Data Breach is half a YouTube reliant mission and half difficult, but I beat the hard part by massacring Iguazu. He does a good job distracting the drones, but I hate him too much to keep him alive. But even with him out of the way, the drone fights aren't so bad. Ocean Crossing goes down a lot like Attack the Watchpoint. It's a dash to the boss, and then a fight that I'm so used to I can even do it on mouse and keyboard. Wait. Steal the survey data sets the tone back down to simple, the only challenge being to hit the LCs in the end. Don't be afraid to kiss them, their AI doesn't account for emotional vulnerability, like a millennial. However, we're thrust right back into the grueling reality once we set foot in that mission. I'm not even gonna give it hate here, it won't change anything. Then we're hit with two simple missions in Eliminate V7, which is just a kill mission where you kill. Then Tunnel Sabotage, which is a boosting mission where you slap on the Bertzel and win instantly. The scale tips once again with Prevent the Salvage of Corporate Tech, and while it seems daunting at first, it turns out that you can just ambush the HC in its spawn area, taking out most of the trouble before it even happens. After that, the LCs are straightforward ACS breaking fests. Server the uninhabited floating city and its alternate mission both require the life support of a YouTube tutorial. The only difference being the normal mission is easier because you just aim and click at the enemy, while the alt mission has you thumb wrestling with a schizophrenic. If you're wondering why I can't hit him, that's because this shit is programmed by ants. Good fucking luck beating this guy, I have no better advice. Heavy missile launch support returns to straightforwardness, earning you the ass rank as long as you barely take damage and know where the enemies are coming from. Eliminate the enforcement squads is the entire reason we spawned Cap the HC 5 missions ago. But also, you're in a closed room. Before that though, make sure you kill all of the guys as you proceed because they will come back to bite you later. Treat the HC fight like a big health bar rather than an annoying shield and you'll have an easier time stomaching the trauma. Destroy the special forces craft gets you back in the ring with the cataphract and honestly, this build isn't that much of a challenge. Though I still prefer having a chainsaw or pile bunker just to really stick it in that tiny hole. Attack the old space port is quite the convoluted one, so let's get right into it. First take the ship on the bottom, then go straight ahead for the three ships on the far side. Then finally take the ship on the highest elevation. This should be the best way of going through them. If you struggle to get away from A, try taking out the LCs with combat logs. The boss requires you to simply stay out of range of the shielded one, and stay as close as possible to the rifle one. Weapons with good ACS buildup usually win better here. Eliminate Honest Brute is probably the most annoying mission. It's not difficult, it just has a lot of things that were placed there for the sole purpose of pissing you off. But either way, S-ranking the mission only entails you rush straight to the boss and take the least amount of damage. Defend the old spaceport is funny because, well... <laughs> On the other hand, defend the damn complex is just as easy apparently. For my build, it's all about timing the attacks so that their healing can't keep up in time. Pretty doable with the Coral build. The last two missions, Historic Data Recovery and Coral Expert Denial, both require the breadth of boosters for the vast distances you're gonna travel. While Historic Data Recovery is simple, Coral Expert Denial requires that you pay attention to what's next and where your ass is currently planted. It's good here to remember that you should be depleting your energy bar every chance that you get, because you don't want to be caught lacking with the EN Recharge. Destroy the Ice Worm is impossible. Let's just be honest here. Yes, you can beat it with Coral Weapons only, but you can't S-rank it. Or rather, someone please prove me wrong. I did beat it only using the Stun Needle for the Shield and Coral Weapons for the actual Worm. Up to you if that counts. Now in Chapter 4, it's time for Underground Exploration Death 1. Here you want to fall next to the platforms to easily avoid the laser fire. Remember to not press any movement buttons so that you can fall faster. Death 2 is where it gets a little difficult. Luckily though, these LCs get one shot by the Coral Laser Rifle, and both Iguazu and Cold Call are trivialized by the entire build, although Iguazu is way easier. The Enforcer goes on quite easily as well, since ACS damage goes wild. This is a good time to mention that the direct hit adjustment of these weapons go fucking hard. 
Death 3 is just about as challenging, though I never found it unbeatable. This guy does get a little bit troublesome as it can dodge your Elden Stars like a maniac. Then we're hit with 4 missions, fighting against ACs starting with Intercept the Red Guns, which despite being a major mission is actually quite generous in its ranking. I was gravely worried and took some time as my weapons were all high damage and low sustainability, while the challenge of the mission was clearing out a ton of MTs. I didn't have too much trouble with Michigan and he actually went out first. Ambush the Vespers is another duo AC fight, though one of the easiest ones, arguably because of the other participant of the fight. But the same cannot be said for O'Keefe, who can dodge your shots while he's down. I don't have much to say here, it's an annoying fight where you chip away at his health. Unknown Territory Survey and its alternate mission is where the bullshit truly begins. I love Rusty, but any fight he's in was not designed with fun in mind. This guy's quick boost speed was not balanced whatsoever, also coincidentally being much less hittable when at higher ACS strain. Man, I wonder why that's the case. Finally, a decent mission. Reach the Coral Convergence brings back the difficulty without puffing it up with annoyance. The first two AC fights aren't all that bad and I don't have many tips for it. While the Ivis fight is the highlight, I could only really recommend patience and timing your shots during certain attacks rather than after dodging the boss. It has good dodging ability but it locks itself in its own attack combos at some points. The alternate mission was also pretty doable. I definitely wouldn't be caught lacking against Iguazu but damn, Snail has a lot of health. Hold up and coordination with the Elden Stars is really good against ACS vulnerable enemies. This is one example. Chapter 5 now and it's almost over. At this point, I was just hoping we don't get any more impossible missions. In line with that hope though is the escape mission. You can pretty easily S-rank by heading straight to the markers without killing anything. But of course the stress swiftly returns with take the uninhabited floating city. I wouldn't say this mission reaches the line of unfairness. Far from it actually. However, it is still stressful to keep up with the lanes. The trauma builds up until the game throws everything at you all at once. My best tip is to bring the pulse protection expansion and use it near the tower when the suicide drones come. Proper placement will eliminate their damage entirely. Fortunately, this is a generous mission and I got the S quickly. The generosity continues in Intercept the Corporate Forces. While it is a long mission with many obstacles, taking a bunch of damage doesn't seem to matter as long as you spend a reasonable amount of time beating the bosses. Freud is another case of proper weapon combo and the HC is… well he's pretty much the same. Breach the Carman Line is a mission I did not enjoy practicing. While the requirements are generous, that is to say that you can beat the level in the first place. Because Rusty is back and now has an extra 7 degrees on his half screen dash. But it does get points for allowing you to access the bullshit as well. Assault boost as much as physically possible for this fight and never let go of the quick boost button. The game encourages it. Shut down the closure satellites is arguably the easiest boss level out of the chapter 5s. Even though Ayer has the big booty fart dash, she uses it sparingly enough where it doesn't feel like you're fighting the little floaty things that appear in your eye. Aside from that, it's a pretty generous level which I didn't expect at all from the world's messiest breakup. Now it's time for the Liberator of Rubicon ending, starting with Eliminate Cinder Carla. I find it ironic that the easiest I've ever had it in this fight is when I'm also spamming explosions. Serves him right I guess. Stay underneath the platforms and Carla will have an easy time running into your combos. Chatty goes down pretty much the same but with a little more nuance to the combos. Weirdly easy for someone wearing tank treads. Oh lord this mission. Destroy the drive block maintains a reputation of devastating me mentally in every playthrough. This one did not disappoint. I actually beat the all mine fight before this one because this shit is just painful. The thing with the smart cleaner is that you need to be able to hit the whole shots consistently enough where you don't lose too much time. This takes forever even on a successful run but it wouldn't be so bad if the boss afterward didn't have a guaranteed hit attack like it's a fucking domain expansion. Sneltia still owns the crown for the shittiest boss in the game ever. Even if you forgive all the other attacks it's just this dumbass laser combo that feels like missing type code that they're too embarrassed to fix. S-ranking this mission is the modern equivalent of the worst FromSoft boss box and it has not gotten any more fun. Good luck! Bring Down the Xylem is quite humorous to me how its Coral Connoisseur gets very easily taken down by Coral Weapon combos himself. Yeah, this one goes down as easily as other ACS breakdown fests. In Alea Yakta East, we begin with the MIA mission, which is fairly easy all the way through, with the only two hurdles being the tunnel of fire that does a lot of damage if you're impatient, and the ambush in that tunnel with one enemy that has a chance to straight up one-shot you. Basically, play this level carefully, although it isn't very difficult. Regain control of the asylum gives you the option to kill the locator drones, but it's way more efficient to watch a YouTube video as you go. If you do that, the real struggle is the laser dodging part at the end. I have no tips for this one, just the don't die? Finally, Coral Release. While it seems intimidating at first, your only real enemy is time. I got a little nervous when I wound up with a B rank, but on my second go, I simply got a little better. Even with all my repercus consumed, I managed to get an S pretty easily. By the way, I still don't know how to dodge anything in this fight, I just kinda ball. Our final grade for this S rank challenge run is... 
and I am decently proud of it. I will admit you can get at least 2 points higher if you sacrifice your mental health a little, but I have already gone too far and I'd rather have a little peace of mind as a treat. Thank you so much for watching and let me know what dumbass challenge run you want to see next. I might finally return to Elden Ring or I'll find another silly thing in AC6. Whatever it is, subscribe so you don't miss it.